tonight, the battleground blitz with just three days to go. Both candidates making their closing arguments. Joe Biden targeting the Midwest, reuniting on the trail with Barack Obama for the first time this campaign. Trump cares about feeding his ego. Joe cares about keeping you and your family safe. The new effort to reach African-American voters. President Trump going all in on Pennsylvania, making four stops just today. This is the state that will save the American dream. And why North Carolina is more up for grabs than ever. Nearly 100,000 new COVID cases in one day alone, a new record, and the new fears of spread this Halloween night. A party of hundreds broken up in Brooklyn, and the big football game today where cases are surging. Locked down again, England closing back down as cases there rise dramatically. And a Halloween with heart, the ghoulishly clever way these children's holiday dreams are coming true. This is NBC Nightly News with Jose diaz Ballard, reporting from Charlotte, North Carolina, and Kate Snow from Cleveland, Ohio. Good evening. Kate and I are in battleground states tonight, and we are not alone. With just three days left, it was an all-out blitz today, with candidates, VP candidates, spouses, and more blanketing swing states. The goal right now, to get every last one of their voters to the polls. Already we've seen record early voting. More than 90 million Americans have cast their ballots. We're here talking to voters about what matters to them. One of the biggest issues, COVID. Public health officials are also worried that Halloween celebrations could lead to a new surge. We are spread out across the country tonight. We begin with Jeff Bennett with a Biden campaign. A sprint to the finish tonight. Joe Biden and Barack Obama in battleground Michigan making several stops together in person for the first time in the 2020 race. Joe Biden is my brother. I love this. I, I love Joe Biden, and he will be a great president. Their push aimed at boosting support among black voters, including a performance by R&B legend Stevie Wonder. Obama hitting the president hard on the coronavirus crisis. Trump cares about feeding his ego, Joe cares about keeping you and your family safe. Here's the truth, Michigan. This pandemic would have been challenging for any president. But this idea that somehow this White House has done anything but completely screw this up is nonsense. Obama and Biden condemning the president's false claim that doctors are inflating the COVID death count. You know, our doctors get more money if somebody dies from COVID. What in the hell is wrong with this man? The people of this nation have suffered and sacrificed for nine months, none more so than the doctors on the front lines and healthcare workers. It's more than offensive. It's a disgrace. Biden's events with Obama show the campaign is leaving nothing to chance. Polling puts Joe Biden ahead in Michigan by more than six percentage points. But Democrats fear a repeat of 2016, when Mr. Trump won Michigan by fewer than 11,000 votes. I don't care how hard Donald Trump tries. There's nothing, let me say it again, there's nothing that he can do to stop the people of this nation from voting in overwhelming numbers and taking back this democracy. And Jeff joins us now from Detroit. Jeff, where is the Biden campaign headed next? Jose Biden's running mate Kamala Harris heads to Georgia tomorrow, where Dem Democrats also have a competitive Senate race. And Joe Biden returns tomorrow to Pennsylvania as he tries to build back that blue wall that Donald Trump tore down in 2016. Pennsylvania, a critical state for both candidates. Jose, Kate. Jeff Bennett, thank you. President Trump is already in Pennsylvania today with four stops in the Keystone State. He's focused on keeping his supporters fired up. Our Kelly O'Donnell is traveling with the commander in chief and has this report. Air Force One touching down in Pennsylvania for a full day, four event tour in this land of 20 electoral votes. You know what's looking good? Pennsylvania is looking good. The president showing anger and anxiety about waiting for election results with a vague warning to Pennsylvania's Democratic governor. Open up this state, governor. Open up this state. And don't take advantage of those ballots, governor. Don't do it. President Trump delivered a striking rebuke of the Supreme Court that he helped shape. 
after a decision that in Pennsylvania's case, the Commonwealth gets three days beyond Tuesday to count mail-in ballots. This is a horrible thing that the United States Supreme Court has done to our country. And I say it, and I say it loud, and I say it proud. The president is trying to repeat a victory here, as polling shows Joe Biden's consistently tightening, now to five points within the margin of error. This doesn't seem like someone who is going to come in second. First Lady Melania Trump on a solo trip in Wisconsin and here in Pennsylvania, taking on Biden. Apparently, when you hide in a basement, you feel safe communicating your wishful thinking. The president who called COVID serious and touted his pandemic management also made a punchline out of COVID hitting his own family. And our great first lady tested positive. That's, uh, well, at least those rumors that we don't live together turned out to be false. Kelly joins us now from Butler, Pennsylvania. Kelly, the president is coming back to Pennsylvania one last time before Tuesday, right? That's right, Kate. He's on the stage now, and there will be one more stop in Pennsylvania after the four events today. That happens on Monday, and he has 10 rallies in a very hectic schedule across a number of battleground states in the final two days of campaigning. Kate? Kelly O'Donnell, thank you. Now to the COVID crisis and fears that Halloween parties could be the newest super spreading events. The number of cases smashing records, infecting more Americans per day than ever before. Sam Brock has late details. Tonight's Halloween scare, record-breaking COVID cases and disturbing photos out of Brooklyn, where police say hundreds of partiers packed inside of a warehouse shut down for breaking New York orders on gatherings as a pandemic rages. The U.S. hitting nearly 100,000 infections Friday, an all-time high, and now crossing 230,000 deaths. Souls stolen from their families, like Gary Gavin, a loving father from northern Wisconsin, whose daughter says he was also battling cancer. I feel like he has just become a statistic that nobody really cares about. I've had people tell me, well, you know, it's less than 1% of people that are dying. It's still 230,000 people. And if it's your loved one, does that make it okay? Illinois just smashed its daily record of cases, almost 7,000, one of 14 states reporting new single-day peaks on Friday. As cases in once battered Florida heat up to levels not seen since August. Anytime you see uh, a resurgence and when you see what's happening in Europe, um, and we, we went through that second big wave in the summer, um, you're always concerned. In Texas and California, both states zeroing in on a million cases. Hospital systems remain under siege. Last night I didn't sleep for more than three hours in a row because the calls keep coming. The surge in COVID coinciding with the arrival of Halloween and deep concern about campus safety. From rivalry college football games to possible parties, San Diego area students hit with cease and desist orders while other schools prohibit off-campus gatherings across the Atlantic. And from Thursday until the start of December, you must stay at home. England about to start a second national lockdown, joining France and Belgium with a fresh wave of the virus striking Europe. Restrictions tightening here and abroad. I just don't think that the sacrifices that are asked to be made are as big as the sacrifice of losing a family member. And Sam's with us. Sam, today Governor Cuomo in New York announced rules about traveling to New York State. And Kate, you know how much travel there is between Florida and New York. No more quarantine list. Instead, what you need if you want to go to New York is a negative COVID-19 test within three days of arriving in New York. Then you'll wait three more days, get a second negative COVID test, and you don't have to quarantine for two weeks. Kate and Jose, back to you. Sam Rock in Miami, thank you. I am here in North Carolina tonight because this is one of the biggest battleground prizes this election. But... It used to be a reliably Republican state. That changed partly due to voters here in Charlotte, which are reliably Democratic and getting bigger by the day. Just look at Charlotte's skyline and you can see the change. If you had come here 25 years ago, you would have seen maybe one or two towers. Everywhere you turn in this city, another building going up. This 
constant influx of people. Does it change this city? We have a huge um, immigrant population here from all over the country. We also have boomers that come, but we're growing most quickly with millennials. Tammy and Darren Bratt moved here from Connecticut three years ago for work. Are you a North Carolinian now? Um, I would like to think so, at least. Have you decided who you're going to vote for? Um, I have. I've actually already voted, and I voted for Joe Biden. What about you? Uh, I've also uh, pre-voted for Joe Biden. And that may be one of the reasons this previously deep red state is now a very mixed purple. 120 people move to the city of Charlotte every single day. That's nearly 50,000 people a year. And 60% of the residents of the county this city sits in were born outside the state. In the town of Cary, just outside Raleigh, the early voting line sounds almost like a geography class. I grew up in Delaware. New York. Michigan. New Jersey. I'm from Somalia. The town has become such a magnet for transplants, locals jokingly claim Cary actually stands for Concentrated Area of Relocated Yankees. There's probably $5 billion worth of construction underway. Cary sits in the area known as the Triangle, which has become a booming hub for technology and pharmaceutical companies. Well, there are 33 active prospects looking at the Triangle region. Those jobs drawing new residents. And the projection is that our current rate of growth will add about a million people between now and 2040. That's an additional 80% of what we have here now. Yadira Salamander and her husband Sean moved their family from Indianapolis to Cary just last year. I'm a chemical engineer. My background is in pharmaceutical. So there's a lot of opportunity here. Um, this area is growing. <laughs> they say not all new residents lean blue. It seems like it's a mixed bag. I've encountered both Republicans and Democrats in the area. Republicans like Mike Simeone, who moved here from New York. I pre-voted uh, last week and I voted for Trump. Why? Uh, I, I think he's done a great job. Even the brats say they could at some future point shift nice. and vote Republican. North Carolina is considered a purple state. Is that something that you see staying for a while? You know, Charlotte's expected to grow another 300,000 people by 2040. I don't know what shade we will be, but it might be a little bit deeper blue. And according to the latest NBC News poll, Biden is currently ahead here, but well within the margin of error. From North Carolina to the battleground here in Ohio, up next, my conversation with black voters and some concerns that they're being taken for granted. Why some fear the Biden campaign isn't reaching enough black voters here in Ohio. We're back from Cleveland tonight. Ohio is one of the tightest battleground states. No Republican has ever won the White House without winning Ohio. And the state has gone with the winner of every election since 1964. But polling here now shows a statistical tie. To have a chance of winning Ohio, Joe Biden would likely need support from black voters here in Cleveland. Six more, please. Six more. At an early voting site in downtown Cleveland, every voter of color I spoke with was choosing Vice President Biden. Anybody besides the, the guy in office right now. We're going to be supporting Biden. Biden here. So are you excited to vote for Biden? No. Uh, not really. That lack of enthusiasm has some Democrats concerned. African Americans historically vote overwhelmingly blue. In Cuyahoga County, where Cleveland is, one in four voters is black, helping make it a Democratic stronghold. But in 2016, Hillary Clinton saw a steep drop-off in black voter turnout compared to four years earlier for Obama. And here's the thing about visiting a polling place. They're voting. Storm Banks doesn't plan to vote at all. As you look at this election, what are you thinking? I don't have any thoughts about it. I, think, I don't think either one of them, like I said, are, is worth the hoopla or worth going to the polls to vote for. They're not adequate. Cleveland Councilman Bashir Jones says his community knows Democrats depend on them. You know, African Americans have had that undue pressure here in America for a long time to, uh, to be the ones to forgive and to, to be the ones to uh, stand up for others even though we haven't been stood up for. Black Lives Matter, period. He's worried these ads the Biden campaign just started running in Ohio come a little late. 24-year-old Derek McKinney very much plans to vote, but for a third party, not Joe Biden. When he was in the Senate with his 94 crime bill, it destroyed countless black families. 
if he wants the black vote to come out in mass numbers like we did in 2008 and 2012, he needs to come out with a specific black agenda and a commitment to reparations for the descendants of American slavery. Derek's mother, Tia Wilson, has been trying to convince oh, her no, son to vote for I, Biden, I critical, but there's a generational split. Mass. Are you on the same page? No. No? No. <laughs> I am a Democrat. Um, I've always been a Democrat. I've always voted Democrat. And um, I'm voting for Biden. Vote early! Vote early! And while faith leaders like Reverend Jimmy Gates are organizing to get out the vote... Vote like your life depends on it. Councilman Jones, who worked as a field director for the Obama campaign, says things were different then. We worked as if we were behind all the time. Um, and compared to this year? Um, compared to this year, I think it's almost expected that black people will go for Joe Biden. And that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate because I believe that you're taking that for granted. And Jose, the number of black voters who turn out in this city could be critical for Biden. I've been all over Ohio recently, and I've seen strong support for President Trump in more rural areas. In just three days, we'll know how it all adds up. Indeed, Kate, thank you very much. There's a similar dynamic here in North Carolina, Kate, and that may affect the balance of power in the Senate. A new NBC Marist poll shows Democratic candidate Cal Cunningham with a 10-point lead over first-term GOP incumbent Senator Tom Tillis. Up next, Halloween with heart. How these magical costumes came to life for kids at one hospital. There's good news tonight about the Halloween spirit and those helping make it a little extra special at a time when we need it the most. <laughs> trick or treat! Happy Halloween! In the midst of a global pandemic, this Halloween is looking a lot different. Thank you. But the spirit Ow. as strong as ever. Ow. Lions and tigers and bears taking over at UMass Memorial Children's Medical Center where volunteers made special hats for babies in the NICU, making this first Halloween hopeful for new parents. They were so excited and it brought just a little bit of normalcy to our otherwise chaotic environment. Oh. Tricks and treats for other little ones too, like care packages from staff bringing smiles to patients at Michigan C.S. Mott Children's Hospital. What do you think? Good. Good. You look great. And at Shriners Hospital for Children in Salt Lake City, physical therapist Matt Lowell, just one of many there, creating custom costumes for kids who use wheelchairs. It's a chance for them to really just embrace being a kid again and not having to be so focused on masking and distancing and everything like that. The longtime tradition I am now capped off by a virtual parade. Thank you. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. A rare chance for kids like Skylar Scusa to let loose during these difficult times. So this is Skylar's costume, so he's chose to be the Black Power Ranger. The Black Ranger. Yeah, this year. And the Power Ranger fan. It was all of you. Small acts of kindness wrapped up in spooky surprises. Oh, it's all candy, so someone's gonna get a sugar high. Jimmy yeah. Muti turned his California home into a socially distanced destination, raising money for a family friend with cancer. But at the heart of the holiday in this unusual year, a moment to remember the joy of simply being a kid again. You know, with all the crazy in the world right now, let's just take one day, no politics, no madness, Let's just have fun with the family. And a reminder for most of you, Daylight Savings ends tonight, so set your clocks back an hour tonight. I'm Jose diaz Millar. I'm Kate Snow with thanks to Jacob's Pavilion and the Greater Cleveland Aquarium for hosting us. Tomorrow I'll be in Pennsylvania with Jose in Florida. Thank you for the privilege of your time and good night. What do you think? Good. Good. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.